now we have our aircraft with electronics inside and also um, the lower wings on and the lower part of the forward fuselage on too. Next step, let's get the uh, undercarriage on and, uh, and then we can move on to doing the struts as well. So in this particular episode, we're literally going to concentrate on getting the, uh, the undercarriage legs onto the fuselage and also there's a little bit of rigging that we've got to do plus we're also going to make the uh, the, the wheels certainly the hubs um, as well at, uh, at this point so the first parts we're going to liberate from their sheets are the plastic parts uh, P21, 22 and 23 which are these here quite obviously the, uh, the the struts. I'm going to do the reverse trick where it's uh, a lot easier to see the tabs. Just release these parts from their frame. The main undercarriage part also carries this bit in the center that we can cut out too, but obviously these are parts that we're going to need. P26 and P25 are uh, part of the uh, the wheel build, so we need to put those somewhere safe. And the other parts we need are the half legs here, P22, P23. go. Pop that to one side for now. And uh, these two parts go on to the reverse side of the undercarriage legs and they should literally mirror the parts of the undercarriage. So this is this is actually this is the the forward facing bit. You've got a little arrow there just saying this that that's that's the front of the aircraft and uh, these attach to the rear legs of the uh, of the undercarriage and obviously strengthen that up there's no need for us to put any carbon fiber through here they actually provide enough um, strength in uh, in just doubling up the plastic um, but there is some flex in there so uh, which is quite useful on hard landings and that sort of thing it tends to absorb the shock better than a, a carbon fiber reinforced part does so also it's worth noting that there are uh, a few holes in the bottom here there's a there's a slot um, there are two little holes there as well at the top and there's one larger hole um, in the middle of all of that and uh, what we want to do is just match up everything like so um, the the outer hole or the smaller hole I just point here um, that's not exactly necessary just there um, it'll be covered over but we do have a, a hole in the top there that should match up with the little hole just there and that's a rigging point the larger hole is for the uh, axle and the slot there is for the little um, uh, the piece that sits between the uh, the undercarriage legs so on some aircraft it's almost a wing but on this it's a very narrow part so let's just apply some glue to the blank side of our leg here. There we go. I don't want to be overly generous because it'll just end up squidging out the sides. But, um, 
enough so that the whole part will will stay on. So we just need to pop that into place there. We might need to clear the holes a little bit later on once the glue is set. Obviously with the axle going through one of those holes, um, it needs to be uh, able to freely rotate. So any glue in the way will uh, will not help with that. So there we go. And obviously we want that to stay nice and flat. So we'll just pop it down on the deck for now. And then do the same on this side too. Attach that accordingly as well. Now on the um, on the undercarriage itself, you've got this little sort of T structure here. Now that actually goes um, uncovered, as it is. That actually falls on the uh, the inside of the the leg. This being the outer leg when these bend down. Um, so it's not likely to be seen that much, but if you prefer, um, you could actually use something like a Sharpie and just mark it up so that it's not so glaringly obvious. I'm using a black one here, but it might be appropriate to use if you've got a dark green or something similar. And obviously try not to get the Sharpie onto the graphics. Go. So on the forward legs here, we're actually going to put some carbon fibre um, as reinforcement. So you'll need your 500 mil carbon fibre strip, um, which should be in the main bag here, all coiled up. When it comes out, it should be nice and straight. So, how do we want to cut this up? Well, each leg requires 38 millimeters of uh, of carbon fiber, and you'll notice if you um, pop the carbon fiber down, you can actually cut it at an angle so that it fits in with the leg that we've just stuck on now. And if you do that, in fact, um, rather than measuring, if you just go up to the, the little hole at the top there, which is a rigging hole, so you want to make sure that you're clear of that so that we can get rigging wire through there, and then come down to the point where it actually would touch with the, um, the leg that we've just attached, and then just mark like so. I'm not going to go all the way through, come off the plastic, and then properly go through it. Then, if I reverse the larger piece, that should also now, with that angle cut, fit the other side too. So I can pop that into position, note where the hole is at the top here, and then just cut shy of that. Now, once again, not going all the way through, but just putting a slot in there and then locating that slot and then cutting all the way through. So, we've got our two pieces of carbon fibre we can now place onto the uh, legs. I'm just doing this for show at the moment. So you can see how they fit, like so. And obviously we're going to glue them in place. Now I'm actually going to go 
and put some glue all down this uh, the inside of this leg um, because we're going to be putting a sticker over here as well and uh, just to increase the adhesion of the sticker I'm just going to make sure that there's a, a good smear not thick but uh, a widespread smear of glue on that leg and then up our carbon fiber piece into place like so put it fairly centrally and there we go same on the other side run the glue all the way down five piece in place there we go good well we can let that dry now and uh, start thinking about the other parts that we now need to add to the setup here so um, stickers we'll probably actually apply those stickers now why not let's get our sticker pack out and we're looking at S18 and S19. Now, can I remember which is which? It's fairly obvious. So S18 sits on that side, which is actually the starboard side. I try to, when I create these kits, if there's a, uh, a left and right of doing things, I'll try and do the right one first, which tends to be the lower number, and the higher number is the port side. Um, it doesn't always follow through. But uh, that's that's the general rule I try to stick to. Right, let's just get this free of the backing paper. So you'll notice on the sticker you've also got you've got a cut out there, which is once again um, to allow the rigging to pass through. So that uh, should not cover the hole at the top of the leg there. And uh, so I'm going to use that as the sort of starting point. If I get that right, then just make sure the sticker covers over where it's supposed to cover over. There we go. And then just use the back of the knife to run either side of the carbon fibre to push the sticker down into place. There we go. In fact, I've got a little bit of white showing that side, so I might just bring it back and go again. Certainly looks a bit better. So once again, just use the well, <laughs> I thought it was the knife. It's, it's the tweezers, but um, the tweezers will do as well. Let's run. There we go. That's nicely in place. So we'll just go and do the other side too.
So this is the S19. Perfect position there. That's it. Boop. That's better. The more you do this, the easier it gets, is the theory. Sometimes it's just dependent on how awake or tired you are. There we go. Right. Now, once we've done that, we can, in fact, um, bend these legs down. They literally bend along the line um, that is dictated by the side of this part here, the, the side edges here. So, what I do is just bend that over like so. Do the same at the back. so that it's sort of it's fairly sort of higgledy piggledy at the moment but um, we'll be able to bring that back and also you'll notice these little tabs here and here um, they need to just be bent down as well now actually once again before we do that let's bend that back up again turn this over and you can actually colour these on the other side. I'm just going to use that Sharpie again, just so they don't stand out too much. Because they're only printed on the one side. So there we go. Now what we're going to do is create the central part between the two legs. And for that, we are going to require P24. Now P24 is scored down the centre and it should fold over nicely. But if you find that the fold is a little resistant, actually that seems to be all right, but if you do find it a little resistant, you can always just run the knife down the score. Just to make it that little bit easier. So we are literally going to put some glue onto one side of the, the part here. Then we're going to bring the part together so we transfer some of that glue over. So, and then we'll just leave that to dry off, and then once it's dry, we'll finish bringing that together. So, um, I'll take a quick break, uh, make make myself a cup of tea, wait for that to dry, and we'll come back and uh, put it all together once it has. 
Okay, that's done. Right, I am going to just hopefully squish it down with my ruler so it's going to be nice and flat. That looks flat. So now the ends of these, you can see there are sort of little tabs at the end. They should insert through the um, slot in either end of the ends of the legs. And you can do it either way up. Um, yeah, doesn't really matter. They should pop in like so like so so this is just a dry fit just to make sure they go um, and now I've just because they're fairly loose just pop some glue on the ends so that when they go through the slot the glue will be deposited around and hold it in place End. And that end, there we go. So it's a slightly more stable structure now with uh, with that crossbar in place. Um, what we're going to do as the next step is actually stick that onto our fuselage. Now the front edge of this undercarriage assembly uh, just goes right up against the uh, the wooden part there so the struts right up at the front there and obviously this should sit as centrally as possible on the uh, on the fuselage itself like so but actually before we do that we're going to put one half of a two part sticker onto the front of this part here it just makes the whole thing easier so that's actually s20 that we need to uh, relieve from the uh, from the backing paper go now I'm actually just to make things easier I'm going to lick the back of I know it sounds weird lick the back of this sticker um, so that it won't stick immediately to the uh, plastic surface of the uh, undercarriage assembly there we go and then it should sit into place um, quite easily Uh, little cutouts for um, not only the uh, the legs at the front here, um, but also those uh, the little um, rigging bits as well. So, so that's in place. Now I'm just going to put uh, some glue, a fairly substantial amount onto the plastic part of the undercarriage assembly. Obviously we want to make sure this sticks down really well. We don't want this falling off. I'm going to put a little bit on the sticker as well just to make sure the sticker sticks down when it needs to. go and then I'm going to introduce that now I'm going to leave it in place once it's on I'm not going to just sort of transfer over the uh, the glue so I'm just going to make sure that the positioning is correct 
and then I'm going to use the tools at my disposal to just make sure that everything is pressed down and secure. and also that everything is centrally positioned. Now the sticker will still be a little bit wet on the underside, so I'm not gonna stick that down until we come to the sort of second wave of uh, securing this into place. But essentially now we have the undercarriage on. We can start fiddling with the angles in which the undercarriage sits so that we get nice straight undercarriage legs. But essentially we'll just leave it now to, uh, to dry off and uh, let the, the glue cure um, so we get maximum strength from it. So the next stage is to get these wheels built. So we can now utilize our little parts that came adrift when we took the undercarriage from the uh, plastic sheet. Uh, we're gonna need uh, P25 first. So let's remove P25. We might as well do both wheels at the same time. So that's two P25s. These basically sit at the at the uh, inside or the rear of the wheel itself, um, and they act as a sort of a bit of a bearing, really, and stop the foam from wearing out. Now. In your parts bag here, there should be an axle, which is carbon fibre. It's one millimetre, and it's a uh, it's a rod rather than a tube, um, so it's solid. That's what we're going to use as the axle. It's also what we're going to use to build the wheels onto, although we're not going to stick the wheels immediately to it, um, but we're just using it as a guide. And... Uh, what you can do before we start popping the wheels on um, is uh, just sand, not a point, but just take off any edge that might be on the uh, ends of your axle, your carbon fiber axle. Now, to start the build, we're gonna take our plastic part, so that P25, and with the blank or the unprinted side facing up we're just going to pop that onto our carbon fiber axle so you can see it's quite a good fit it's not too tight it's not too loose and then what we need to do is pop on the back of the wheel so that's on your fuselage sheet and that is uh, Z5 Just remove both the Z5s. There we go. I might just give that a quick rounding off. There we go. So, what we're now going to do is just apply a little bit of glue to the back face of our P25 part. And then once again, build up the wheel by popping the back of the wheel on there. So once again, you can see the foam. So that all goes together like so. You can build the other wheel on the other side if uh, you so desire, it's a nice quick way of doing it. There we 
we go. And now we need a two millimeter part. And that is D14. So let's remove those parts. And actually, whilst we're here, we'll also remove uh, D15 as well. Now, if you can cut the, when you cut, cut the curve in the part as well. Not vital, but it does help. Sand it down a bit too. There we go. This one. Okay. So now what we're going to do is add some glue once again to the stack. A little more surface area on here. The um, uh, D14 doesn't go all the way out to the site, so leave a a, uh, a margin around there of a couple of millimeters. And what I tend to do anyway is when I pop um, D14 on there, then I'll just scooch it around a bit. And then when looking at it from the top, I'll just make sure that the uh, parts are sitting centrally to one another, which isn't too hard to do because obviously we've got this axle going through. So we'll do the same on the other side. Just avoiding going all the way out to the edge. Put that on there. Spin it around a bit so we distribute the glue. And tip that on like so. Excellent. Right. So next stage is just to pop the smaller D15 parts on top of the stack. So we just need a smaller amount of glue. I'm trying to avoid getting any on the uh, on the axle at all because obviously then that will gum up the. Uh, the wheels, although the wheels will be eventually attached to the axle, and the axle will be the one that's doing the spinning. Um, we don't want that just at the moment, so let's pop that on. Once again, spin that round a bit just to distribute the glue. And then I'm looking to make sure that um, when I spin the the wheel, as you can see, that one that one's a bit wonky down there, but that one is spinning quite nicely. Um, and nice and flat, so it's quite even. Right, let's let's just get our D15 onto this part as well. level it all up a bit. There we go. Right, now the last part of the internals of the wheel are these P26 parts. And using these plastic parts on so the either end of the, the wheel um, helps to stop any wear that the axle will have internally on the wheel itself. So it should help the wheel to remain true when being used repeatedly. So just pop that on there. And then it's at this point, once that is on there, that we want to make sure that it spins as true, true as possible. 
and then once you're happy with that you can, you can leave it so that that sets in that position. Yeah, they're both spinning. You see, they're both spinning quite nicely now without too much wobble, which is great. So the only thing we've got to do now with these wheels is prepare the the outer part of the the wheel, which is has a slightly coned shape. So the parts we need are um, the two Z sixes on the uh, fuselage sheet. So. Let's see the other side so easier to judge so on these parts we need to do some scoring so we need the scoring sheet go and then as you can see here we have an indication of the uh, of the part just there and we can line that up and then we've got all our scores that go crisscrossing across the uh, the part itself now um, once again I don't I haven't got my tape to stick it down so what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to go around and mark just by putting an indent and a, or a pencil mark at each point. So, there we go. And then, using my ruler, around and accurately score so you wanted all all of them all the scores to go through the central hub part position and each of these scores really sort of represents a spokes that sit underneath the what would be the canvas covering the wheel like so so what we're now going to do is make sure that each of those scores bends. We're at, therefore, the best thing there is to just overbend them, like so. And then I'm actually just going to do a quick little, although that there's no um, uh, bevel shown on the guide, I'm just going to do a little bevel on the inside of this, this V that we've got here. Um, so just Doubling that just slightly. Like so I'm also just going to match this up. Like so that seems to be a really good fit. If it wasn't, I could always just trim it slightly, but the uh, the two edges come together nicely. Like so. So what I'm going to do is just add a little glue to the edge. Or that V and then bring those two halves together so we transfer the glue over and then I'm just going to let it fall apart and dry off and while that's going on I can start scoring this no need for you to watch 
Um, so I'll uh, just pause the recording while I do that and then we'll go straight on to attaching the, uh, the part to the wheel. I've got both scored now. Now let's bring this together. So it's literally just pushing the two piles together and then you can go around and just even up those scores just to get a nice cone shape but what we can do to uh, enhance that even more is obviously position this onto the wheel and obviously there should be still be a little hole in the middle of the, uh, um, the wheel and that should sit on there like so now what we're going to do as we've done before is add some glue but rather than putting it all over the surface obviously this isn't going to con come in contact with um, the vast majority of the surface of the wheel now but it is going to come in contact with the edges of these two staggered foam two millimeter parts so what I'm going to do is just make sure that we have a very generous amount of glue on the edge here and one of the reasons that we are putting a generous amount of glue on is of course when the tire goes on the tire will sit in that channel created between the two outer um, one mil foam parts and the uh, and the in, inner two mil foam parts and if those parts aren't well stuck together then the uh, tire will gradually pull those parts or push those parts um, outwards and so your wheel won't look particularly good so anyway right I'm just going to pop the part down onto the wheel to transfer some of the glue over and then I'm going to actually take the wheel cap off put it to one side and let that glue dry and then reintroduce it which I'll do for the other side as well so just bring those two halves together and then add some glue to the other wheel as well. As I said, a generous amount of glue. Sure the glue transfers over. And off it comes. Okay, so we'll just let all of that dry off. And while it is, we can turn our attentions back to the undercarriage. Firstly, we can give it another knockdown with our tools. Hopefully the um, stickers would have dried sufficiently to take a little more to the foam underneath. There we go. And the other thing that we need to do is actually put some uh, rigging on the undercarriage. It actually has a sort of an independent um, uh, rigging um, that we can do now that we don't have to when the uh, <coughs> the two wings are uh, rigged up with all the uh, um, interplane struts etc so what you need now is to go and grab your um, uh, your rigging wire and we need to measure off 30 centimeters or 300 millimeters of cord uh, I'm just measuring it along the uh, the bottom of the the table here. You can see I've got uh, I've got some stuff there. I've got some markings here. You can see it up the side here as well, um, and across the bottom. Just measure off my 300. Uh, cut off. There we go. 
So this is the, the pre-stretch stuff that, uh, that I suggested we did in a, a, the previous video. So where do we start? Well, first thing we're going to do is grab our, um, our rigging tool, our needle threader, essentially. And we are going to pop it through the hole down on the fuselage, the little one that uh, pops up on the, uh, the semicircle loop. So we should be able to push our rigging tool through the hole in that, like so. And then we can grab our rigging line, just pop that through the, the loop, and then draw it through, back through that hole. Like so. There we go. And then what we're going to do is on the inside end of the uh, of the cord is just tie a little knot. It doesn't have to be a stopper knot, just a just a very simple knot. And with my big fingers, even even a simple knot is uh, it's not that simple. There we go. We can do it. There we go. Obviously, want it as far towards the the end as possible. And then what I'm going to do is just trim the tail of that off, so that that knot then comes up against the inside of our little uh, our little rigging holder there. So. What we then want to do is take this over to the opposite side. So it's going to go over to this. This side of the undercarriage, like so. And we need to just pop it through the larger of the two holes that are created by that T-bar. That's, uh, that sits there. Let's see if I can get this into position so you can better see what I mean. So I'm just going to pop it through that that T bar there. Like so. And then I'm going to use my ringing tool to go from the inside to the outside on the top hole in that little selection of holes. So hopefully you can see where I mean. So it's not the axle hole, it's the one above it which is a lot smaller than the axle hole. And I'm going to take my rigging wire, pop that through the two wires of the rigging tool and then just pull that through like so and then the opposing hole on this side we're going to thread that back through so it's essentially the rigging wires running along where the axle is going to run to So just to repeat, that's the opposite hole to this side on the on the starboard side here. So and that's the one that sits above the axle hole, or well below it, while we've got the aircraft upside down. So then we want to go back through the hole that that T bar creates. Like so. And we can put, put some tension on this. And then we want to, as we have done at 
the uh, the base here where the rigging comes from the outside and goes outwards across itself like so we want to take the rigging back through in a similar way from the outside in so we just need to get our tool through a ringing tool through the hole on this side which is a little bit of a fiddle but not too bad as you can see it happened pretty quickly there and then just pop our end of rigging line through the loop and drag that back through like so. There we go. So I'm just going to leave a tail there at the moment and I'm not going to tension this up too much. As you can see you can tension it from the from the one side. Um, but I'm just going to leave it loose for now um, while we build everything else, do the rigging, and once we are uh, happy with how everything is sitting, we can then tension it up and uh, um, make sure that the undercarriage is sitting nice and square. So as you can see, it's uh, the, the additional tension. You can change the position of the of the undercarriage legs slightly so um, once we're happy with the position we can glue everything into uh, uh, to position to hold it and, and uh, make the tying off as required so uh, so that's all I want to do at the moment for the undercarriage itself um, so we can pop that to one side and to finish off we've got our little caps to put on so these should just fit nicely onto the wheel press them down you can sort of give it a good squish to make sure that they are on and uh, try and get the the gap that runs around uh, between the two foam outers um, to be as even as possible that's where the um, that's where the tie is going to sit. So. This one came apart a bit. Just put that back together. Probably doing this a little bit too quickly. But, uh, there we go. Not waiting till the glue's dried properly. Now talking of glue drying what I'd suggest is that before we put the tires on this we let this set for a good 12 hours overnight um, before we come to put the tires on because as I said um, they tend to push down into that uh, that cavity there and if the glue isn't properly set then the parts will start to splay and come adrift but um, you know, if we're uh, if we're patient and uh, we let the glue do its thing then we should be all right so not too much wobble on those wheels either which is great um, you can do if you want just take one of the wheels off pop it through the axle hole like so pop it on the other side. We, we will eventually glue these wheels on but there's no point at the moment um, and in fact putting the tyres on it's much better if we put the tyres on um, while the wheels are off. So uh, anyway there we go we now have the undercarriage on our Sopwith Pup. 